Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are back with another version 0.6 RTR Imperium Serectum Unit Roster Guide and Preview. And today, of course, you can see we are going to be previewing Massalia. Yes, a fan favorite, a lovely little unit roster of Massalia over here, ready to fight all the Romans <laughs> and the Celtic nations in the region which you will be starting in. But first things first, guys, before we get going, uh, we just have hit 2,290 subscribers. So if you've not subscribed already, that would be fantastic. And if you have, thank you for the continued support on the channel. But without further ado, guys, let's talk a little bit about the history of this glorious unit roster. This historical note, guys, comes from Mausolos once again, so thank you to him for the continued awesome history notes that we're getting on all of these rosters as to why they exist as they exist. So let's go. Massalia was a colony of Phocaea in Ionia and originally founded as an emporion, which is a port slash market near the mouth of the Rhone. It quickly grew into a major city and controlled the trade route into the interior of Gaul which it managed to secure by a chain of sub-colonies along the coast and commercial offices in towns of the interior and on the Atlantic coast of southwestern Gaul. The Massalian merchant Pythias even reached the legendary Tin Islands, which is probably silly islands off Cornwall, and circumnavigated mainland Britain in order to find access to new trade goods for his city in the late 4th century BC. Despite its wealth, however, Massalia never followed an expansive military strategy and only kept a minimum military force. Since the early 4th century BC, Massalia was connected with Rome through Amicitia, an official declaration of friendship, and Roman authors often praised the Massaliote navy. But they never actually tell us of any battles or campaigns that they were involved with. Yet archers seem to have been prominent in Massalia, and thus Massalia have a special archer and a marines unit. Later on in the campaign, the Thoracitae with Celtic chainmail shirts can be unlocked, but since Massalia never followed an expansive strategy and was very traditional, it is lacking in effective cavalry forces. So that is why, when we have a look over here, we don't have too much cavalry, and we have a, you know, a more limited roster than some of the more famous military nations in Greece, because, of course, there's no real accounts of these guys, you know, being the big boys in the neighborhood, fighting a lot of battles, that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's get into the units, guys. And we're, of course, going to start with the Greek Slingers. Yes, we've seen these guys many times before. Looking very nice. A nice few little blues and yellows going through these guys. I don't really think I need to mention the stats on these boys too much. Three morale, seven defense, four missile attack with a missile range of 140 and a lot of missiles. The Greek archers, like I say, nearly every video, I would take these guys over the Greek slingers in nearly every situation. Pretty much just because you've got an extra two missile attack. They've got an extra morale, so they'll last in the battle a little bit longer, but... Four morale is dreadful, so they will just rout if they get touched by the enemy. So, yeah, but I'd still take these Greek archers over the Greek slingers. Because of that extra two missile attack, it's going to do a lot more damage with that missile attack. Especially when you start getting experience on these boys. So, on to the Acontisti guys. Six morale, 12 defense, six melee attack, and nine missile attack with that seven Javi, uh, seven Javis to throw. Looking very cool indeed. Ready to run at the enemy. These are, guys are very fast, of course. All these light archer units are always quite good at the end of a battle to charge down the enemy because they're so fast. Um, so if, you know, if you're stuck without a use for these guys towards the end of the battle, get them starting to charge down the enemy. If you like Javi units, of course, the Acontisti are fine. Going to do some decent damage with that nine missile attack. Um... But for me, I just don't really like them. I know I've said that a lot, uh, but I just don't really enjoy using Javi units in general. So, now let's go on to the Uzonoi over here. And let's have a look at these boys, because they look really nice indeed. The big Thuria shield, and I love the big, um, you know, the brace bar across the middle, looking very cool indeed. And I just love the look of these guys. They look really nice, like... With that big shield, with that javi, yeah, looking really cool. I like the different colors as well, and you can see the Massalian, um, 
lion over here, looking very cool, uh, and a few different designs. And we've got a flag uh, of uh, Scotland, kind of, <laughs> old Scotland flag over there. But yeah, uh, yeah, looking very cool. I do like the look of these guys. But looking at their stats, the Uzonoi are so much better than the Akontistai. So if you are a fan of Javi troops, get these guys instead. 21 defense, 2 armor, 6 shield. So 8 defense against missiles, which is pretty decent. And a miss, uh, defense skill of 13. Morale of 13 as well, which is really good for a missile unit. So they're going to stick in the fight for such a long time. And we've seen with the Uzonoi and the Greek Peltasts in the last few battles that, you know, they will stick in the fight there, even though they're losing for quite a while. And they can hold much better units, you know, in melee while you try and destroy the better units and flank them. But a melee attack of 8, of course, isn't great. But that missile attack of 9 with their 7 Javis is always pretty good. And what you've got to remember is, uh, as well as the fact that they have, you know, better everything else than the Akuntistai, they also have 20 more men throwing Javis. So that's an extra 20 um, missile uh, missiles being thrown, which 20 times 9, 180 more damage that these guys can do per volley if all those javelins land of course but that is you know a lot more damage that these guys can do overall which is very nice indeed so if you like your javi units guys these are the guys for you so let's have a look at the post reform missile units guys and we have the masalio archers and these guys are post reform of course so do remember that when we're talking about them and look how good they look with the Luno Thoraces on them there. And the tiny little Aspis shields. Look at the tiny little shields they've got. Teeny tiny shields. There we are. Very cool. I love the look of these boys once again. The art team has just done such a fantastic job with all these units. It is glorious. It is absolutely glorious. I'm going to say glorious many times. <laughs> of course. Always saying glorious. But anyway... Seven morale, so they don't have a great amount of morale. A melee attack of eight, so again, not a great amount of melee attack. But missile attack of seven, so that's a lot better than those Greek archers. Just one better than the Greek archers. But they've got a missile range of 130, so same as the Greek archers, and ammo of 25. So these guys are not quite the Neo-Cretan archers, but they are better than your Greek archers anyway. Of course, 21 defense. With an armor of 5 and shield of 4. So defense against missiles is 9, which is decent. It is really decent. And a defense skill of 12. So, yeah, they're not quite the Neo-Cretan archer level. Where the Neo-Cretan archer is a, a pretty good hybrid unit. Where they can stick in uh, stick in melee for a little bit. And they also, the Neo-Cretans, have 160 missile range. But these guys are definitely better than your Greek archers and your Greek slingers. So when you get to that point, it's a good option to get these boys into the army but we do have one more missile troop guys another reform unit and we have the masaliote epibartai these guys are the marines and look at those shields look how glorious they look they look fantastic really really nice indeed massive aspis shields on these boys and look at them they look so cool and they've got their slings they've got their slings They've got their bum bags, and they've got their swords. They're ready to go, boys. They're ready to go. Very nice indeed. And these guys are a really, really, really good unit. Really good. Really cool, and a nice hybrid unit indeed. Look at them. So good. I absolutely love them. And once again, we can see the tiny little details that have gone into all of these, uh, these units here. I mean, even the texture on the sling... Like, that just doesn't need to be there. Who's going to zoom in? Like, from here, there's no way you can see it. Who's going to zoom in to see the texture on the sling itself? So, it's just those tiny details that really set this mod apart. But let's talk about these guys, because they are fantastic. Really good unit. 14 morale. Melee attack of 11, which is decent, because that matches a lot of, you know, Hoplites. Um, Theroporoi units, or, you know, it's close to anyway. And a missile attack of 
eight. And that 11 melee attack, remember, is, is with a sword. So it will be better than a spear unit that has, you know, 12 or 13 melee attack anyway. But a missile attack of eight with a missile range of 140 and 32 um, missiles for this unit. 28 defense, guys. 14 defense against missiles and a defense skill of 14. So these guys are really a fantastic hybrid unit. And on top of that, they are fast moving, which really helps them out because, you know, often we see with the hybrid units, they're not fast moving, whereas these guys are, and they are going to run really fast, including with all that armor and that shield. So that is great to see. These guys can flank the enemy, fire a couple of volleys, and then charge them for fun. It is, yeah, really, really cool and really versatile unit. So if you want to use these guys, I would recommend using them. In fact, I would probably, you know, depending on how you're doing with your infantry, I'd have quite a large contingent of these if I could. Um, and what I'd do is I'd have them all in a line, like a, a, a massed line, and, you know, get close to the enemy and just start firing at them. And then when the enemy charges you, that's fine because these guys can handle themselves in melee. So you get to use a melee unit that gets to do a damage and whittle down the enemy before they're even close to you. And I know you get to do that with, you know, Javi units, but you have to get right up in their face. Whereas these guys, 140 missile range, they can start firing from over here. So how many volleys? They're going to get three or four volleys into the enemy before they get close, which is really cool. I love these units. I, I'm sure you can hear, but I love this unit. Really, really cool indeed. So let's talk about the infantry then. And firstly, let's start with the uh, Masaliot General's bodyguard. Very similar to the Spartan General's bodyguard. And look at these boyos. They are cool as hell. So cool. So cool indeed. Very, very nice. Just take those guys in. Massive Aspis shields once again. Big spears. And these little sashes. I don't have we seen those before? They look nice. I do like them. Oh, I love that design on the helmet there. Very cool indeed. What a cool unit. 47 defense, guys. Monstrous defense. 16 of which is against missiles. And 31 defense skill with a morale of 20 and a melee attack of 15 and a charge of 17 now let me tell you for a greek um for a greek infantry unit that is obscene i, I don't think i've seen many you know greek infantry units with a charge quite like that let's have a look at the thorakita yeah thorakita i've only got a charge of 11 these guys have a monstrous charge for a greek infantry unit of course when you're talking about some of the celtic units um some of the thracian units they might have a charge slightly more but these guys this charge is ridiculous it is so good <laughs> and uh, you know the rest of their stats go to match it of course it is your general's bodyguard so you're only gonna have 60 of them but these guys are gonna do some serious serious damage very nice indeed and let's just do a capage and plumage check yeah we've got the plumage and we've got the capage. Fantastic. So we know they're elite. Very good indeed. Right. On to... Let's go with... The Masaliot Hoplites. And if we look at these guys... I love the plumage going on here. It is fantastic. Look at that. Glorious plumage. Very nice indeed. And of course, again, big Aspis shields with really cool designs on them. This one especially I really like. And, you know, a lot of them are referencing... The um, the icon of Massalia. And here we are. You can see. There we are. Cool. Very nice indeed. I love the plumage on these boys. And some of them even have capes. But they aren't quite elite. 37 defense, however, is, you know, better than most normal Hoplite units. Or is it? No, sometimes it's 38. Sometimes it's 36. So, you know, it's bang in the middle there. 7 armor, 8 shield, so 15 defense against missiles, which is good. 22 defense skill, 13 morale, and 13 melee attack. So pretty standard Hoplite unit overall. Matches a lot of the other Hoplite units that we've seen. Of course, remember Hoplites, you know, they're not going to be doing amazing in the late game. So when you get to that point, if they're not really experienced, you really want to start phasing them out. And, you know, 
you, when you start in the game, you're going to have a few units um, of these guys in an army. And by the late game, you're going to still have them, of course, unless you you know your armies have been destroyed. So what you tend to do, which is a good tactic, is when you get your reforms and you get your better units, spread them out into those armies that have reform units. So you're not got, say, one army that's much weaker than all the others. So that's that's a good tactic to use. But yeah, Mazaliate Hoplites, quite a nice unit. Going to do some good damage early game. And of course, late game, unless they've got a bit of experience, not going to do quite as much. But Theroperoi, here we are with the Theroperoi. And again, Thurios shields on these guys. Not Aspis this time. Very nice indeed. Looking very cool. And we do have a bit of capage and a little bit of plumage as well. But not fully caped and plumed. But yeah, 14 morale, so a bit better morale than the Hoplites. 12 melee attack, so slightly less melee attack. But a missile attack of 14 with the two Javis that they're going to throw into the enemy. Total defense of 34, so not quite as much as the Hoplites as well. And 6 armor, 6 shield, 12 defense against missiles with a total defense skill of 22 and total defense of 34. Now, basically, when you're talking about these guys... It's up to you whether you want to take these or the Hoplites. It's how much you value that Javi throw before charging. How much do you value those couple of Javis that they're going to throw into the enemy? And it's completely up to you. You know, the Javi throw is very, very valuable. Uh, but so is, you know, that extra bit of defense as well. So it's just completely up to you whether you take... One or the other. I tend to take a bit of a mix, just depending on what the recruitment capabilities are like and what my army makeup is already. Nice. Well then, let's have a look at the Massalian Thorakitai, the reform unit. Oh yes. Oh baby. Look at these boys. Very nice indeed. Fantastic. Really, really cool. They've got the Celtic chainmail on. They are ready to go look at these boys and we've got a bit of plumage but we've got a lot of capage going on haven't we very nice indeed absolutely glorious these guys have the thurios shields as we can see again and again awesome new designs on these boys there's the kraken um and yeah lots of different cool designs we've got the hydra over there as well looking very nice and again the lion of massalia Nice, 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 nice. Very good, very good. But let's talk about their stats. So 37 defense, so it's the same defense as the Hoplites we saw. But 10 armor, 7 shield, 17 defense against missiles, and slightly less defense skill. So what you want to be uh, wary about is these guys might do a little bit worse against armor-piercing units. But honestly, there's not that many armor-piercing units um, you know, in the game. And the AI won't recruit too many of them, even if they, you know... If they have access to them. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. I think they'll do very good. And 17 defense against missile is what you're going to need. If you are going to end up fighting the Romans. Because they have some really good Javi throwing units of course. Because they are the Romans after all. But 16 morale. Really good morale. 12 melee attack. And remember that's with a sword. So they are going to do a lot better than a spear unit with 12, 13 melee attack. So that is good. Uh, and a missile attack of 15 with the two Javis to throw. Very, very cool indeed. Really good, strong unit like all the Thorakitai. Very nice. Oh, that is an awesome shield. We definitely haven't seen that one before. Look at that. Very nice. Lovely little detail on the side there. And it looks almost... Yeah, it looks cool. I love that. Really lo do love that. And then lastly, guys, we do have the mercenary Su Saluvian. I was going to say the Sullivan. Saluvian um, swordsman over here who are a really, really good unit. They just haven't been, the textures haven't been updated yet because they are a Celtic unit, I believe. So, yeah, they just haven't been updated. They will be updated when they get around to the Celtic units. So don't worry about that. But they are a very good unit. And I wanted to include them here. And the reason why there's three is because Pythinia, who is our sneak preview for next time, has a lot more units than us. So I needed a few units to uh, 
to bolster the army. Otherwise, we would have been absolutely ruined. Because <laughs> they just had so many more units than us. Um, so, yeah. You can see how much cavalry they have and infantry compared to uh, what we would have had if we just had these three and four units. But let's have a look at the bodyguard. So, we got the Greek general's bodyguard. Now, I believe this cavalry bodyguard comes after... Uh, the reforms, and it only really applies to your um, main, you, you know, your faction leader and your faction heir, heir, I think. But I could be wrong about that. Someone uh, correct me in the uh, comments down below if I am wrong. But morale of 18, melee attack of 14, you know, total defense of 34, um, 15 armor and 47 charge. Like we've talked about before, these guys are great on the charge and great in melee, but there's so little of them that I'd just use the charge a lot more. Um, you know, anti-cav, they are fantastic as well. They're always great anti-cav, so use them as you please. Of course, all General's Bodyguard units are really good, so you know, you can just use them as you will and try not to get your General killed, so <laughs> yeah, nice. Right, and let's have a look at the Prodromoi, which are over here. And of course, we've seen the Prodromoi many times before. I know some of you love Missile Javi Cav. Um, uh, no secrets as to my opinion on them. Uh, but yeah, Missile Javi Cav, in, to be fair, you know, in RIS, Missile Javi Cav are actually really powerful. I just can't be bothered microing them. So <laughs> my uh, dislike for them is, is born out of laziness, really. But yes, the Prodromoi, we've seen them many times before. The 9 morale, 10 melee attack. 12 defense and a charge of 27. We've seen them in specific situations. These guys can do some really good damage on the charge. Really good damage indeed. Um, so yeah, using these guys to the best of your ability is really good. Get, to, get them to fire off all their jabbies and then you can use them to chase down the enemy or do a few cheeky charges in the back uh, of some units. Never charge them in the front. I mean, never charge the cavalry in the front anyway. But yeah, you know. That's especially true with the Prodromoi. Now, let's have a look at our Theroporoi Cavalry. And I really do like these guys with the Thurios Shields. Because a big theme through a lot of the rosters is the Aspis Shields after the after the reforms for a lot of units. But these guys are, I believe, pre-reform. Um, and they come already with the Thurios Shields. Um, with, um, you know, a few people on the shields. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of, ah, oh, yeah, Shield Buff. On the shield there, look. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf or whatever he's called. On the shield. That's pretty much his acting performance in Transformers there as well. If uh, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying. Um, right. On to uh, <laughs> onto the unit. 13 morale, which is okay. Total defense of 17, which is pretty poor. I mean, it's not great. But it's not horrendous for a cavalry unit. But a melee attack of 10, which is okay, and a missile attack of 9. These guys can also form the Cantabrian Circle, if you want to do that. But a charge of 30 is actually really good. So these guys, although it looks like their defense is not great, their defense against missiles is only 9, and their defense skill is only 8. They've got that missile attack of 9, and the 7 Javis. But that charge is actually fantastic. That is really good. 30 charge for these boys. So these guys are a very light cavalry that has a fantastic charge kind of like the thracian light lancers i would say so and they look really cool as well really cool and they've got a lot of capage going on which is cool fantastic so i think that's everything guys in terms of the saluvian swordsman we didn't really go over the stats but the stats for these guys are really, really good. So if you want to get them, which you can recruit them early on, um, they're not post-reform. They are very good. 15 morale, 16 melee attack, and a 35 defense with two Javis of 15 missile attack. They are so good. That is a very strong, strong boy unit. So just look after them. They will do absolute wonders for your army. Right then. Without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the battle, and uh, let's get moving forward with the boyos. Bithynia is always already charging us down. Gonna have to get these guys spread. We'll bring uh, the Thorakitai across as well. Make sure they're on, and then we've got the Saluvians. Where are they going? Why are they doing that? We'll try and get the Epibartai into the action as well. 
I'm just going to use my cavalry just on one flank. I don't want to be too aggressive with my cavalry right now because they've got loads of cavalry. But let's have a sneak preview of all these uh, Bithynian boyos. So here we are. We've got Bithynian Procromoi, Bithynian Hoplites in here. Some of the uh, Thracian infantry guard. We've got to be very careful of those. And the Romfa Fori. Look at these swords. Look at those swords. Those guys, yeah, we've got to be very, very careful of those boys. What are they doing? Are they, are they like, running away? <laughs> Where are they going? <laughs> Come back! And then they've got their own, uh, you know, Royal Peltas. Oh, they start, they, the Bithynians look fantastic. I love those boys. Um, if you want to see how the Bithynians did against the Seleucids in my uh, last campaign, you can do. Uh, in my Seleucid campaign, do check that out. Uh, spoiler, they didn't do amazing. <laughs> but then again, I did just target them straight away. Where are they going? Bro, come back. What do they think they're doing? Like, they're not doing anything. They're just running away. Imagine if they, it was, like, withdrawing. Keep coming forward, boys. I honestly don't know what they're doing. What are they doing? If you didn't enjoy, uh, if you did enjoy the video, guys, and you don't want to watch the battle, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Who are those? Thracian Peltas. They're not going to charge us. That's fine. Yeah, get firing, boys. Fire and wave. Oh, yes. So this is a good thing. We can get in there. Charge them, and we should absolutely shred them. Come on, the Epibartai. Oh, they've already gone. They didn't like that, did they? Nice. I love this unit. This unit's so cool. I really like hybrid units in general. These guys are doing their Cantabrian circle, but I don't care. Right, let's get up with our, with our cavalry. So they are charging down the hill. I would prefer to kind of, you know, hold the line really here than charge up the hill. I know they're going to be charging down it, but that's fine. Oh, these Saluvian swordsmen are getting a shredding from all the jabbies that they are, you know, taking. But that's fine. They'll be able to hold. They're a really good unit. We can fire at the enemy. They're light lancers. Noble cavalry. Yeah, look at them. Let's keep coming back slightly. I think it's time to... Uh, Come forward. We've got the Thracian tribesmen over here. Hello, boys. Why are they focused, like, just on the Saluvians? It's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> hey, the Saluvian swordsmen have gone. How have they gone? They have 15 morale, bro. They've got 15 morale. Maybe they got charged. They did get charged in the back slightly. What are these guys doing? What's happening with the morale? This is so weird. Oh, that's Bithynian Noble Cavalry. Maybe not something we want to uh, be tangling with too much. Let's come out. Oh my god, my army is crumbling! No! <laughs> right, let's come down here. Where are they all? Why are they all running? It's only Hop... Oh, it's the Romfe Floroi, isn't it? I forgot. Those guys have a morale effect. And it's a really strong one as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's. I forgot how strong it was. If you've not watched my Sparta campaign, then check it out because... You know, we basically had a mercenary army in that just full of Romfoy Foroi. And... Um, we basically just charged across a river in one battle and... Just destroyed. Like, the other army just ran away. It was kind of crazy. And we were charging across a river. So we're gone. We're done. This is us dead. Wow. How strong. Where are the Romfa Foro anyway? Because that must have been... I, mean, I guess it might be the Royal Peltasts. But everyone's just running. They're not even holding. Bro. I wonder whether those Royal Peltas do uh, morale damage. No. 
Where are the Rumpa Four I gone? There we are, the infantry guard. That's that will have been it. Frightened nearby enemy infantry. Oh well, we killed their general. <laughs> I don't know how. I I'm honestly not even concentrating right now. Now that our whole army has just run away. Because there's no chance we're gonna win this. But I don't where did the general die? Where is their general? Oh, he's over here. Charge them in the back. Wow, that was just ruthless. I guess those, those you've got to be careful of those run for Floroy. They are ridiculous. All the, uh, yeah. The guard infantry. Yeah, that infantry guard is, that was so strong. That's a 15 morale unit. They pretty much, so one of those Saluvians had lost three men and it's still routed. That's quite strong. I don't know. <laughs> That might be too strong. I don't know. That's like, and when I played it, it, when I played with them, it was quite strong as well. But they frightened them quite a bit. <laughs> oh, we've been absolutely shredded. What are you? Ah, oh, throw up right cab. Just go and enjoy yourself. Have a couple of charges. See if we can route one more unit. Maybe these boys, the Akontis type. Boom. I guess not. Yes! And then the, th the Bithynian Theroperoid Cav. Oh, wow! That was brutal! That was absolutely brutal. Yeah, look at that infantry guard. 130, 35. And the Royal Peltast as well. Oh, well. Well, guys. Well, <laughs> well, that was embarrassing, but I don't think you can do much against that Royal Guard. They just destroyed the morale of everyone there. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.